Hey, thank you for checking in. So, you know, you're looking at a FET animation here. You can always play with these. Some of these are fun. You can search PHET Hooks Law on Google and you'll find the link to this. Um, and so, you know, I've clicked over here to energy because we're talking about energy. It just doesn't show everything going on, but it, we can sort of talk through it. So I've got a spring connected to a wall over here and I'm just going to grab this little thing. I'm going to pull it out in the positive direction. And everything in terms of this animation is from the perspective of me applying a force to the spring and doing work on it. You can see over here there's a bar graph that shows the potential energy. And the thing to review here is that, you know, as I pull this out, I am doing positive work uh, because my force and displacement are parallel, and that work goes into the potential energy of the spring. Um, when I go, you know, now I'm letting the displacement be to the left on the screen, my force is still to the right, I'm doing negative work on it, so the potential energy is decreasing. In effect, it's giving energy back to me, doing work on me. Notice that when I compress the spring, right, the force is to the left, my displacement is to the left, I'm seeing an increase in potential energy here. Even though I'm moving in the negative direction, my force is in the negative direction too. So those are parallel, and uh, that's still a zero degree angle between those. I'm doing positive work as I move it this way. So the potential energy is increasing. Now when you read through the, the purpose of this video is to really kind of make it easier so you don't have to like read this by yourself. This is the pages in the book. I hadn't assigned these. Um, I think it's a good idea if you read them, but I'm making it easy for you by kind of going through them with you. Um, and so this and this stuff you do know, and I mentioned this negative sign prior to, you know, it's probably about two weeks ago now, because we talked about spring constant what seems like a while ago now. Um, and then, you know, we're going to really get at this notion, and they make life a lot harder here. We've already derived, not this equation per se, but we've derived the whole 1 half kx square, squared formula without calculus. They're using calculus here. Um, and I'll come back to this and explain, you know, why it's initial minus final so that this makes sense. Um, and so going back to my animation, um, what this animation does not show is the work done by the spring. So everything I'm talking about on this animation is about the work done by me. Meanwhile, the spring exerts a force, like as I push this in, the spring force is to the right, right? Because this is a compressed spring, so it's pushing to the right on your screen. Uh, the displacement has been to the left, so the spring force is doing negative work. And that's the, the author of the AP book, an AP level physics course like this, wants you to understand both from both perspectives. The work done by me, so I'm going to start over. So as I squish this from x equals zero down to this negative displacement, see there's my displacement, my force is to the right, so I'm doing positive work. Meanwhile, while I'm doing that, the spring, which this animation doesn't show an arrow for the spring force, the spring force is to the right while the displacement's to the left, so the spring is doing negative work. And as long as there's no change in kinetic energy, my positive work equals the spring's negative work. So the net work is zero. Okay. Uh, similarly, when I bring it out here and start to stretch the spring out, my force is to the right, the spring force is to the left. So as I elongate the spring this way, the spring is doing negative work. Okay. Uh, so I'm hoping that makes sense. I don't think if I put an energy plot on here, that's not going to really help. So you can just see the, the quadratic nature of it. Um, notice that this is from the perspective of the spring potential energy. It's always positive, right? We're always doing... Uh, we're doing positive work, the spring is storing energy, right, so we're up in the positive territory. All right, so let's go back and look at the AP book. The question actually is pretty easy, um, but this stuff can be a little confusing, so uh, I just want to point out these issues. So you can see I'm going to zoom into this a little bit, and if you prefer, actually, you're, you're big kids, and so you can decide, like, hey, I don't want to listen to you, I'd rather read this, go for it, right? And then you can just sort of, you know, make sure I don't say anything super important. The thing that you have to get out of this is that this is the work done by the spring force, not by me, or not by the applied force. Right, so W sub S, this is the work by the spring force. So we're using that negative sign in here to indicate that. Okay, this is really the minus sign right here is due to the 180 degree angle between the force and the displacement, which is indicated here as a dx, which is maybe a little bit confusing. But the spring force always goes opposite to the displacement, where really if I go back to this picture that they refer you to here, the origin is when the spring is relaxed. So if x is positive, the spring force is negative. Right? Think about it, the spring is pulling back, right? 
if I were to squish this like they're showing here, well now the x is negative, right? There's the origin, so the x is negative, the spring force is positive. Okay, so the spring force and the x are always in opposite directions, cosine of 180, so that's where that minus sign is coming in there. And then they're integrating from an initial position to a final position. So when they're integrating kx, k is just a constant, you get x squared over 2 for the integral, and then they evaluate, they're evaluating, and they, they are doing the final minus initial. But because of the minus sign here, it flips the position. So this minus sign hasn't been distributed in yet, but when it does, you get initial, min initial squared minus final squared, which is a little bit off-putting. This is the work done by the spring is equal to 1 half kx initial squared minus 1 half kx final squared. So that's a little weird. It's nothing too off the charts. Um, you know, I would hope that you're getting the concept. I certainly am trying hard to be a conceptual teacher so that you don't need to memorize as many formula. And if you just know that that, you know, spring energy or the work done against a spring from 0 to some x is equal to 1 half kx squared, then you'll be able to figure things out without remembering too much stuff. And so, um, you know, this is again work done by the spring. The minus sign here is just because it's in reverse. Now, here's where they're getting into what I was get when I was showing you that animation. This is the work done by the applied force is equal to the work done by the spring force, assuming that you're not doing any kinetic energy change. So you've got, you know, they're showing a mass. Going back to this, they're showing a mass here, right? And so, if you speed the mass up or slow the mass down, then you cause a change in kinetic energy. So that's really the work energy theorem here. So they're saying if this is zero, one has to equal the negative of the other. So it, it's a little bit of a much ado about nothing thing. It's not that easy. I would suggest, I'm not going to ask you to submit it, but I would suggest, should th suggest that you try this checkpoint and check in the back and then read over this example problem. On uh, the next assignment, there'll be a, a problem like this where you're really using the work energy theorem, right? This is, you know, and this is, they say, something that I say pretty, you know, we're putting the work energy theorem together with the idea of the work done by the spring force, okay? So that's a good example to read. This part here is really, this is good to review, just, just you know, you guys are in math class, some of you guys aren't taking calculus currently, so this gives you a, a textbook explanation about this idea I went over last week about integration, um, and they're, they're kind of doing it their own way here. Um, there's the equation we started using, right? So we're already there. We're at the end of chapter 7. You don't have to worry about this. And, and those of you in calculus, you haven't, I don't think you've learned the... Actually, you probably have learned the chain rule, but we don't need to, to, to you know, they're deriving the work energy theorem, so there's nothing that useful there. So, um, and then this is just more. I'm not going to assign this, but certainly get it. We're going to be talking on Thursday about power again, so I've said this a couple of times. This is actually, I've not said anything about this formula. That doesn't really get used, but it should make sense. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. I think you'll be, is there something else? I don't think there's anything other than the review. So we're going to be transitioning into Chapter 8, which is on potential energy on Thursday, and I uh, appreciate you watching this video. Let me actually, just one other thing before we end here. I don't think there's an issue with this. Um, yeah, I snapshotted this, so this is on page 149. They're referring to this standard scenario for a mass on a spring, so I think this is a pretty easy question. You've got the answers in the back. Typo. I'm, so, I'm silly. Um, so uh, email me if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching this, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.